If you're not going to work, then get out. I'm sick and tired of having to support a woman like you. Hearing my husband, Dan, say this, I heard something inside me snap. Why do I have to put up with a person like him? To a man who makes fun and looks down on people just so that he could feel superior. Actually, I don't need this kind of man in my life. My name is Louise. I'm a 36 year old housewife. I work from home and I'm a freelance illustrator. I originally went to an art university because I love to draw, and after graduation, I worked for a company which specialized in designs. Then, when I turned 30, I took the courage to start my own business. I decided to do this in order to express freely and also express my own way. At the time, I was single and thought, it's my life, so I'll do what I want with it. But I met my current husband, Dan, through a friend of mine. And Dan and I got along very well with each other. We decided to get married, and a year later, we were a married couple. The company where Dan worked for had branches all over the world, and he traveled around as a salesman. Because of his difficult tasks at his work, Dan wanted me to be a full time housewife. So I temporarily stopped working as an illustrator after our marriage. It is true that Dan worked overtime and traveled a lot, and someone had to take care of the house while he was gone. Now that we have become a married couple, we have to support each other properly. That's how I felt, and I understood the situation, so I had no complaints about quitting my job. I thought that I could continue to study drawing illustrations while being a housewife, and when the time comes, I can resume being an illustrator again. I love my husband because I was able to think about this situation in a positive way, and I knew that he also loved me. We trusted each other like this and had no worries or complaints about anything. But then came a turning point to our marriage. Dan was officially assigned to a new sales office, and it was also decided that he was put in charge as the general manager for the new office. So he got a promotion at work. This also meant that he wouldn't be transferred frequently, and we would need to settle down in the new city. We can finally live a settled life. We had always been moving to new places in less than a year because he got transferred frequently. And we were both getting tired of living in an unfamiliar place and moving around so much. But now, we could finally settle down and live in the city, and we were both happy. Until now, I have been too busy to think of anything else but supporting Dan. But from now on, that wouldn't be the case. I might even be able to work again. Unfortunately, though, it didn't work out that way. After the transfer, Dan was busy taking over and setting up the new branch office, and he had a very busy schedule at work. On top of that, a problem occurred. The rent fee at the new location was higher than we had expected. It wasn't impossible for us to live on Dan's salary alone, but we were barely making ends meet. And Dan's company didn't provide any rent allowance as one of the benefits, so we had to pay out of our own savings. If I think about the future, I wanted to make savings. But if it's like this, I won't be even able to make any savings because most of Dan's salary would end up being used for just our living expenses. I thought about using our savings to make ends meet in case of emergency, but It seems like I can't even do that. I asked Dan if I could work, keeping in mind that I'd make sure to do the house chores properly. But he looked at me with a difficult expression on his face. What came out of his mouth was, I'll give you permission, but you have to make sure to take care of the house. Although I felt a little weird and uncomfortable with the way he said this, I had supported Dan as a housewife all this time. I was also sure that Dan must have been anxious about the change in lifestyle with a new environment. That's what I thought to myself and decided not to worry about it. I could finally work doing what I love. I was so happy to be working again 
after several years. However, Dan gradually began to be strange towards me. Hey, what is this dish? What do you mean? It's just pork chops with simmered vegetables and mashed potatoes. What a rubbish. You're always at home, but how dare you slack off with your cooking? Dan began to criticize me with the meals I made. He never used to say such things before. I won't be able to get any energy from eating crappy food like this. That's not true. Carrots, Brussels sprouts, and potatoes were very cheap today, so I just made some simmered vegetables and mashed potatoes as a side dish. And you like pork chops, don't you? I said so without thinking. What the hell? Are you trying to say that my salary is low? Dan's sudden loud voice made me shrink instantly. I didn't mean it that way at all, but how could he think that way? I was just shocked at Dan's anger. How hard do you think I've been working to provide for you? I've just been promoted, so don't do anything to irritate me like this. I tried to catch my breath to argue back, but I stopped myself after thinking for a moment. Dan is probably going through the most difficult time of his life right now. He's stressed and is pressured about being in charge at work and the responsibility of having to protect the family. I'm sorry. I apologized. My husband is probably just very tired. I tried to think it that way. But even after that, Dan's horrible attitude continued. Hey, it looks like you're not cleaning the bathroom properly. You don't have the shirt ready that I'm supposed to wear today. You better brush my shoes. Dan had never been like that before we moved into the new place, so what was wrong with him? Dan is constantly yelling at me. And day by day, I began to doubt my husband. Balancing housework and my work was more difficult than I had expected. I wanted to work a lot more in between housework, but if I tried to do it perfectly to meet Dan's satisfaction, I would end up spending the whole day just doing the housework. If I try my best to complete work to my client's requested deadline, the time I had between house chores would never be enough. Now that I've started working, I was wondering if you could do some of the house chores too. I suggested this to Dan. But Dan says this. You're ignoring all the housework because you're doing your stupid job. So quit that stupid job then. Just because you get to work from home, don't you dare get carried away. It's not like you even make a lot of money from it. You're just a housewife, but you think you're so superior. It became common for Dan to yell at me like that for being a housewife. According to Dan, I'm a full-time housewife, even if I'm always at home working. What a selfish way of thinking. I couldn't understand him anymore. It's true that I don't make much money, but that's because Dan keeps getting in the way, and that's why I couldn't get more work done. I was so fed up with him, so I started to do the bare minimum of housework for Dan so that I could have more time for my own work. Then, my husband became even more grumpy than before. The gap between Dan and I grew deeper and deeper. Then one day, while I was cleaning our room, I found his payslip. He's so sloppy, leaving it out here like that. The payslips were left on his desk carelessly. But being somewhat curious, I picked it up. I knew about Dan's salary, of course, but I had never seen his payslips before. Being curious, I looked at the payslip and was shocked. When I checked his salary amount on the payslip, it was only about half of what I had been told. What's going on? I had been receiving monthly living expenses and rent from Dan, and the remainder was being used for his own personal use. Seeing his payslip is not enough, so where on earth does Dan get the missing money from? How is it possible that his salary could be so low when he had been promoted in the first place? Huh? From when was it? I looked for other payslips, but couldn't find any other payslips before his promotion. To be honest, I had no idea what was going on, 
and it was only then that I finally confirmed to myself about the doubts I had towards Dan. We couldn't possibly live off only with his salary written on the payslip, and I wondered what Dan was thinking about. As his wife, why would he keep such an important matter from me? Why didn't he tell me that his salary had gone down? As I was gathering the payslips to question Dan about it, the phone rang. It was from my uncle, Phil, who came from Dan's family. I didn't really know him very well, having only seen him a few times. Oh, Phil, it's been a while. What's wrong? Yes, it's been a while. Actually, I hate to tell you this, but I'm lending some money to Dan. I was wondering when he would pay me back, you know. It's been a long time since I lent him the money, and I've been worried that he won't pay me back, you know. What? He owes you money? Now, everything clicked in my mind. Dan had been using the money he borrowed from Phil to pay the amount he's been missing from his salary. The amount Dan borrowed was around $10,000. I sincerely apologized to Phil and promised to pay him back. Even though what Dan did was horrible, he didn't try to blame me and said gently, as long as he pays me back, it's fine. I had run out of patience with Dan. That night, I didn't tell Dan about his debt or that I had seen his payslip. But I felt anger towards Dan rising in me. He had been looking down on me about being a housewife and making me do a lot of house chores and even interrupting me from doing any remote work all this time. That day, Dan still kept on being verbally abusive. When will you learn to do proper housework? The meal isn't even tasty. The living room is dirty. What the hell have you been doing at home? Were you working at your crappy job again? It's really easy being a housewife, isn't it? Don't you realize that what you're saying is contradictory? I'm cooking and cleaning as much as you, aren't I? If you're not happy, then you do it. You've been coming home on time lately, so you can do it, can't you? When I argued back, Dan slammed the desk. Since when did you become so bossy? Don't you dare get carried away like this. Who do you think even provides for you anyway? I argued back. What's so bossy about it? I'm doing my part. So what about you? I glared at Dan as I argued back. I don't have to put up with a person like him anymore. I don't care what he says. I don't care what happens anymore. With that thought in mind, I argued. But Dan doesn't try to back down. You don't even take care of the house properly, and all you do at home is pretend to work. Why don't you start by earning some proper money? I thought that should have been my line, but I kept my mouth shut. Hmm. <laughs> I should have never married you. You're eating up all my money here. You're always saying we don't have money, so why don't you earn it? If you won't work, then get out. I'm sick and tired of having to support a woman like you. My husband looks at me satisfied, as if he had won the fight. The look of superiority on his face gave me the chills. He must have thought I would apologize to him then. But then, I said this. Fine, I understand. I'll leave. As if I had been waiting for him to say that, I took my luggage I had already packed and prepared to leave the house. Hmm, you can't do anything on your own anyway. What makes you think that? I looked at Dan coldly. And by the way, I'll leave this here too. I've already filled out my section. I slammed the divorce papers I had gotten from the city office during the day onto the table. I guess he didn't expect me to leave with the divorce papers behind. My husband was speechless and looked shocked. Well, that's that. So fill them out and submit them ASAP, okay? After saying this, I left the house and headed for my parents' house. I had already told my parents about this and they welcomed me with open arms. The fact that Dan's attitude suddenly changed. The fact that the amount of the payslip was much lower than I had been told. 
and the fact that Dan was in debt. When my parents heard this story, they urged me to divorce a person like Dan immediately. Of course, I intended to do so. But would Dan even sign the divorce papers for me? My father told me that if Dan won't agree with the divorce, he would refer me to a lawyer. I thanked him for his reassuring words and hoped for a divorce settlement as soon as possible. And about a week after I left home, Dan came over to visit me at my parents' house. Did you sign the divorce papers? I'm sorry, I. I'm only asking if you signed them or not. Please don't divorce me. Dan pleaded at the front door. I was a little perplexed by the complete change in his attitude, which I didn't really expect coming from an arrogant person. My parents looked at Dan suspiciously, but I decided that we should talk about it anyway, so I brought him into the house. Actually, I wasn't even promoted at work. Dan's promotion was a complete lie. In fact, he was transferred to a branch office because of demotion, which was why his salary got low. It seems that Dan had always been the type of person who couldn't do his job very well. I had noticed that he was somewhat inept at his work, but I had never imagined that he would be transferred to a new position because of a demotion. He said that all the transfers he had been through were the result of being passed around from one department to another because he was so bad at his job. And what he ended up with was a small position at a branch office. Supposedly, it's almost impossible to get any promotion from there. Dan, who is too proud of himself, couldn't talk to me about these things and ended up faking it as a promotion. Having lost his position at the company, Dan, who had no other source of support but only from his home, began to maintain his pride by acting arrogant, looking down on me, and being superior by verbally abusing me. I thought that I was a great husband just because I got to support you as my housewife. Dan was disturbing my work and making fun of me in order to maintain his pride. I understand everything now that you're gone. You were making a lot of money, huh? Just before I left, I left a copy of my own bank book in Dan's room intentionally. The monthly deposit was less than Dan's salary, but still enough to help us make ends meet. I finally realized that I need you. I can't pay the rent by myself, and I think that if you and I work together again, we can make it work. So let's start over again. I want to be with you. I won't ever make you feel like that again. Dan had tears in his eyes. But I had no feelings for him anymore. If you can't afford the rent, why don't you just move out? There are cheaper rooms to rent for one person. And what about your debt? Don't you have to pay Phil back? I said, and my husband looked confused and asked, How do you know that? Even after all this time, he was still hiding the debt from me and trying to start over. He really is a helpless person. I know you were getting by with the money you borrowed from Phil because of your low salary. But if you really wanted to start over with me, don't you think that I had the right to know about your debt? I said that to Dan, and my father also joined in. You're being too dishonest, Dan. I can't trust my daughter to you anymore. The same goes for your debt. What were you trying to do without telling Louise about it? Hearing this, Dan remained silent. So I continued. If you don't agree to the divorce, I'm going to lawyer up. Your verbal abuse, everything that you've said to me, will be a perfect evidence for me to get a divorce from you. I also have proof, so be prepared. At my words, Dan understood the situation and took the divorce papers out of his bag. I really, really can't take it back, huh? It's too late. We are strangers now. I received the divorce papers from Dan. We didn't have much common property, and we always split our savings. We also moved out of the room we were living in, and it seems like Dan resigned from his job. The rumor of divorce spread at the company, and it became even more difficult for him to work there. 
Dan has been steadily paying off his debt to Phil while working a part-time job. After the divorce, Dan contacted me several times. I still want to start over with you. Since we divorced, nothing is going well at all. I realized that you were the only one who was on my side. Hey, it's not too late now. All the requests to get back together from Dan gave me the chills, so I changed my phone number. If Dan had put aside his pride and everything else and told me the truth at that time, we might have tried to start over together. But it was too late. I won't ever forgive his verbal abuse towards me and the affection I had for him is long gone. I'm glad I left him. After that, I resumed my work as an illustrator. I'm very busy, but I'm enjoying every day. Now that I'm finally free, I have a bright future ahead of me. My work is like my lover now. I never thought that the courage and decision I made at that time would change my life so drastically. You only live once. It's much better to live each day happily without any regrets. I thought to myself this as I took my eyes off of the monitor screen I was working on and looked out the window.